opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Well, I think like all of us, we're excited. It's a little early to start. I can't believe with 24th, I, we have the Pistons in working out at our place right now. That's where they're having their training camp. And to think that we started a week earlier than the NBA is hard for me to believe after all those years of going October 15th and it's starting to now creep into September. But, uh, you know, I've got a good team that I like with still a lot of question marks. Uh, Josh Langford, health, question mark. What we do at the four, question mark. And, and probably uh, the other one is, you know, we did lose 30 points and 15 rebounds and trying to figure out how we uh, get those. And yet, with Winston, Henry, and uh, Xavier Tillman, we have three guys that played awfully well at the end of the year, and hopefully they've grown some now. So excited to be back and excited to get started. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we will open the floor for questions. For Coach Izzo, on your right here. Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, Tom, obviously we've been asking coaches the same question, but the California bill that would allow players to capitalize on their images and likenesses, uh, where do you stand on that? You know, I, 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 I'm embarrassed to say this, but I had my SID get all you writers, get your articles on it, and I tried to read up on it and figure that you guys are the experts and you would know, so I had nine articles, and there were nine different opinions. And uh, mine's probably the tenth, you know. The only thing that I would say on it, I, I sure as hell don't think it's politicians' job to get involved in this. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm baffled by that a little bit. But, you know, like I heard Mark say, you know, I'm in for, for uh, players getting whatever they can get. I just don't know what the effects are going to be. And so I'm wide open on it, like I've been other things. I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I'm given a politician's answer. I've learned over the last few years that it's hard to comment on things that you don't know a lot about. And I don't know, I just, all this stuff gets thrown at you. I don't know what it'll be like to be on a team if some guy's doing this and some guy's getting nothing. I don't know what that does to the chemistry. I don't know how many people it's really going to benefit or to what level, Myron, it's going to benefit anybody. Uh, so I'm, I wish I could get more information, but I, if I said one thing that I think we should do, um, I think we got to get in front of this a little bit more. I think uh, sometimes we're a little bit reactive, and meaning uh, schools, NCA, whatever, and I think sooner or later we got to get a little more proactive. But um, I'm big on uh, helping people with cancer. I'm big on the coaches for cancer. And every time I go to an event where I was trying to do more and raise more and this and that, and every once in a while I tell people, don't forget what we've accomplished. I mean, we've made great strides in that area. You know, I think the cost of attendance, the, the meals, the different things, and having the Pistons there and learning about the G League and their travels. There's a lot of things that we've done that are really good. I hope we can keep progressing in that manner. And if more money and there's better options, um, I'd be all for it. But I just, I'm a little afraid to comment on something that I don't know what the residual effects will be on a team, a program, or uh, anything else. So I'm, I'm for players getting as much as they can get that keeps the playing field even and and keeps uh, everybody happy and that's hard to do now so if you guys got any good answers because those of you that i read um you know you guys were all over the map just like i am all over the map so i think we're all kind of questioning each other right now and hopefully we'll all work together to, to come up with a solution Hey, Coach Robin Washit with HuskerOnline.com. Uh, Fred Hoiberg was up here talking about um, your guys' relationship, specifically earlier this winter when he came up to East Lansing and spent a lot of time with you. Um, maybe just can you reflect on on that time and um, you know the, the bonding you guys had, and also what his addition to the league means. Well, his uh, you know his son is on my team, so that that makes a bond in itself. And I asked him when he got the Nebraska job, does he want to take him with and uh, I think he felt the pressure of his wife and said, hell no. But uh, I'm glad he's, uh, 
his, his son is with me, but I, I followed Fred, you know, I, I heard he made some comments on his name and likeness. When you're called the mayor, that means you're bigger than probably anybody in that state. You know, they might as well have called him the governor when he played. So he could have probably made a fortune in this. And uh, but I, I, I've enjoyed uh, the chalk talks with Fred. You know, now he probably won't share those same things with me. And I enjoyed watching the, you know, what he did at Iowa State. I mean, I thought he did an incredible job there and uh, taking that program to what was starting to become an elite level and. You know, his his opportunity at Nebraska, what I think his grandfather was a coach there. He was born or raised there. His parents are from there. His wife's not that far away. Um, pretty unique situation. And the uh, the fans at Nebraska, to me, are some of the best. You know, when they weren't even great, they've packed that place. And I've enjoyed Nebraska people. So it'll be fun to see Fred there. We just probably won't share chalk talks anymore. Tom, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News and Big Ten Network. Uh, you mentioned Joshua Langford's health still being a question mark. Can you update us on where he stands at this point? Yeah, and what I mean by a question mark, Mike, is, you know, he was out seven to seven and a half months um, with, uh, you know, the little bone in his foot and just because it doesn't get as much blood. And we, we were a little extra cautious on him because we think he's very valuable. He was playing so good for us until he got hurt. And, uh, you know, if you look at NBA people or even college people and talk about how long is the actual recovery once you start playing, and sometimes it's half the time. Well, half the time with our schedule early, you know, there's going to be some question marks. But he has been practicing um, just about every day. You know, now he's in live stuff for the last two and a half weeks, three weeks, and uh, making great progress. It's just the unknown of how long it'll take to get him back to where he was playing last November, December, and part of January before he got hurt. And I think uh, he's a key guy for us because at 6'5", he can really shoot it, but he's kind of like a Gary Harris. He's a two-way player. He's one of our best defenders. And losing McQuaid, we're going to need a perimeter guy that can defend, although Aaron Henry has done a very good job of that too. So nothing no lightning rods that are against them. It's just the time it's going to take to get him back. 